Philemon, chapter 1, verse 10. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds. Okay, Paul's writing to Philemon. Philemon was a slave owner. Onesimus, now he comes on the picture. Here he is first mentioned in this book. He's the slave. He's under Philemon. Paul is in jail. This is the subject of the letter that's being written, Onesimus. And here is the request and a testimony of what has happened to a runaway slave. We're done with the introduction of the letter. You know, how you doing? Good to see you. Good to be writing to you. How are everybody doing? My son Onesimus. Now, Onesimus was not Paul's son. So, we call Paul a liar. If it's not by marriage, or it's not by a relationship with any woman. So the relationship has to be according to what Jesus said, you must be born again. Because Paul can later on mention that Timothy is his son. And the scriptures record that Timothy, his mother, his grandmother, and his father, who's a Greek. And what we see by my son in this verse, chapter 10, is Onesimus is a born-again Bible-believing Christian. Under Paul, who was in jail, somehow Onesimus and Paul in his bonds came together and Onesimus received Christ as his Savior. And what we realize and need to know is, when it comes to life, you know, I'm going out soul winning. I got 14 people, I got 100 people, I got 200 people saved. That's not the relationship. And that's good that people are getting saved. But you need to realize that we have a relationship with those that do get saved. And it's a father and son relationship. Now what's a father do? In 2017, most fathers today, they make children and then they take off. Well, friend, that's a sorry statement, but that is true with many Christians today. They go out and make children, spiritual children, and then they leave them to go make more. And yet a Bible father is a father is a man that has produced a child and raised that child and trained that child and nourished that child. We just don't go out and win souls. Winning souls is not the primary goal. Yeah, go in all the world and preach the gospel. But when you do, the few that will go through the straight gate. What do you do with them? They become your spiritual children. You are under obligation by God through the free will of that person that received Christ as their Savior to train them. Now, I understand there may be situations where you can. That person may live in another state. And yet we have internet, emails, all kinds of electronic means for you to deal with that person. There are books out there. Chick Track has a wonderful book, uh, Final First Step, something like that. Get that book to that person. Right? Chick Track say, listen, I, I, a man told me about the Bible uh, for newborn babes in Christ. Something step. I can't remember what it is now. I seen the Bible Baptist bookstore in Pensacola, Florida has a couple good books about being a Christian, a new Christian growing in the Lord. So I've been in the prison ministry since 2004. I'm not in it right now, but I've been involved in prison ministry 2004 and there have been few men who have gotten saved as my witnessing to them. Well, that is a very hard situation where 
there are things I can do and cannot do. And when they receive Christ as their Savior, I got prayer. That's all I got. Because I can't go to prison and train them. I can't bring them stuff. If I do, it's got to be approved. And there's very much limitation. <coughs> Excuse me. So Paul has witnessed to Philemon. And find, uh, excuse me, Onassis, and Onassis has received Christ as his Savior, and Paul takes Onassis as we are a fa father, and so I'm not God the Father, but I am likened to a father to you now. So the slave becomes a servant of Jesus Christ who died for our sins. Praise God, glory to God. Slaves can be saved. And as wrong as it is, many slaves that were brought from Africa to America, they weren't given the white man's God. They were given the God and Jesus Christ of the Bible. And are seated right now with Jesus Christ with their masters and other slaves and servants and the homeowners and the families rejoicing at the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those slaves and those owners and the masters who have not received Jesus Christ are burning in hell today. Paul had a unique prison ministry. Paul has told us there are times that he, and we saw with Peter one time, handcuffed to guards. Well, you got yourself a captive audience when that guy can't leave. And then his converts, they get converted, and they go home. In the prison ministry I had, I went to the to prison. I witnessed to him, gave him Bible illustration, Bible uh, training, and then I went home. And those men I have in my Bible, when I come to those points in the scriptures, I'm praying for them. They came to him instead of like I went to them. The my bonds is not money certificates. Paul is in jail. And in jail, arrested because of the word of God, he is still preaching the word of God. He is writing to churches. Many of his epistles came from the prison. You know, the secondary greatest book outside of King James Bible is Pilgrim's Progress. And do you know that John Bunyan wrote that? I believe about 90% of that was in two prison episodes of him being in jail. And partial of it he wrote when he was not in jail. And then he gave up on it and God put him back in jail and finished the book. Bonds would not only imply he's just in a jail cell, but he's in stocks. And maybe his hands aren't chained. And Psalms tells us about Joseph who was in prison, that his hands were made to hurt by the instruments of the bondage that he was in. You see, the United States correction <laughs> prison system Sorry, I, a little sarcasm there. It's not like the, the, the prisons of the history that America wants to rewrite. I have been told by a missionary of Mexico, who was in Mexico, that if you go to a Mexican jail and no one brings you food, you don't eat. And the best friend you have in a Mexican prison, I am told, is the one that you will befriend that his family brings him food and stuff. 
And we will see in the epistles that there is help being brought to Paul. People are helping Paul. It's not going out playing basketball, playing baseball, watching TV. And listen, I've been in the prison system as a, as a chaplain. I know what they do. I know the recreation and the entertainment that they have. And this is not in the Roman cells like Paul is in. Read the accounts of prison of Paul Bunyan. Of uh, uh, torture for Christ, I can't remember my mind. I, I forgive me, my mind is forgetful lately. But torture for Christ is about a Christian that was in jail, unlike today's jail. Paul in jail. Joseph was in jail. So Onassis was a illegal runaway slave, but is now. A child of the king, child of God, and wants to make things right by this letter. I would assume that Paul and Onassis has come to the agreement together. I need to go back to Philemon and get things straight. Now that is a sign of repentance and getting right with God. Listen, any time that after you got saved, if you do not want to make reconciliation. I would doubt your salvation. Because that's one of the ways of repentance is you got to make things right. But then some people, I don't, they don't believe in stuff like that. But I believe that James says that works comes after faith. So here's a runaway slave. He has no life. He's owned by another man. And he has become a child of God. He has become a, a born-again Christian. He is saved. And when he died, he went to heaven. Well, my family were slaves, blah, 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 blah. Well, why don't you get right with Jesus Christ? Why don't you get saved and get the, the hope, the, the blessed hope, the, the glorious, the joy, the love, the long-suffering, the patience. Get the fruit of the Spirit and you'll get off. Trying to riot, trying to get even, trying to do things like that, if that runs in your family. We are all servants. We are all slaves to a thing called sin. Sin puts you in bondage. Paul's in bondage because of the word of God. We are in bondage because of this flesh, because of this sin, set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. A man that's not saved, you're shackled to your sin. And your sins will drive you into hell. You need to be free from your sins. And only Jesus Christ can save your sins. And Paul and this runaway slave, Onassis, Philemon, the owner, Paul and Philemon are friends. Now, if that's not an act of God, if that's not God drawing people together for his honor and glory. Listen, Peter, James, John, Philip are running out there with the gospel, doing the work in the ministry. And God brings Onassis to Paul, who knows Philemon. He ran into Silas. I don't know if Silas knows Philemon. So... Now, Onassis could have lied to Paul or anybody about how bad Philemon was. To seek mercy and pity from Paul. And had Onassis taken that attitude, he may never got saved. There are people out there cry foul and there's no foulness. And we don't know why or how Onassis ended up in the prison with Paul. But if Paul's in bonds, he's in jail, somehow Onassis had to come to Paul and be in Paul's presence. And we don't know how. And 
I don't believe in accidental events. I believe in the power of God, the Father, the Almighty. So I don't think this whole thing is accidental. That he ended up in the house, the prison house of Paul, and then asking Christ to save him. Now, there's a wanting to go back and make things right with the master. That's what this letter is about. Paul witnessing to him, and after salvation, Paul's talked to the slave to return to his master. Now, if Onassis did not bring, hey, I got to go back to find Lima, Paul says, listen, you need to go back. And uh, with this letter, Onassis, okay, I will. Either way, a life-changing event has happened. God happened. And Onassis never knew what would happen. And he's not going to know what happened after this event. When Paul sends his epistle in the hands of Onassis to Philemon, he does not know what Philemon is going to do. We can only judge by the character that we've read in seven verses. That Philemon will, okay, go ahead, I'll send you back to Paul if it will be that much work and good for Paul. But we got to go back to the Old Testament when we see something like this has also happened as a letter is written by a king. And Uriah is carrying the message to Joab. And in that letter that he does not know about, the orders go to Joab to put him in the hottest point of the battle that he may die. And Uriah did not know what was in that letter. He did not know what the future would hold. By the anger of David. Now here, Paul, we have no anger. We have joy. Joy unspeakable. Here's a man that is saved by the grace of God. However it happened, you need to go back and make things right with Philemon. And we are sure that Onassis said, okay, I'll go. And Paul would write a letter. And the main point of this epistle is Onassis is going and is doing right. And that is the point of a Christian, is he's going and he's doing right. Now, you're going to fall. Sin will come, and yet that's why 1 John 1, 9 is written, and we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. There's a want to do right. And a letter, receive him. Forget the past. Wonderful. Again, that is our life with God. Forget the past, go forward. Get things right, make things right. Peter, Lord, if someone has offended me, how, may, how often should I forgive him? Sometimes, Jesus says, 70 times 7. Philemon, you're going to have a guy who's going to come to you and whatever he's done for you, he's going to ask forgiveness 490 times. Forgive him. And based upon the seven verses that we read about Philemon, I would see that the Christian character of him is he's going to forgive Onassis. And Paul, we're going to see a little bit later, he's going to make a request. Oh, Nasimus is very charitable. He's very profitable to the ministry. Can I have him? Can you send him back to me that I may use? I want to send him out like Silas has been sent out. I want to send him out as Mark has improved and gone out. I want to send him out as, Cor uh, as Apollos has gone out. As Priscilla and Aquila are going out. I want to train this man and send him out. Do you realize if Philemon does go give Onassimus permission, go back to Paul. Paul's going to train him. He's not with Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 4, 
We can only assume that Paul has trained him up as his son, as he'd done with Timothy. And Onesimus is not a runaway slave no more. He's out there preaching the gospel. How far has he gotten? Maybe Paul's trained them up and Paul has sent them back to Philemon saying, listen, this guy is ready. You got a bunch of people that are under your hands. You got a church in your house. I am sending you another minister to go preach to those people in, in your area. Listen, the day that I got saved, that Saturday afternoon, that Sunday morning when I made a public testimony, that Sunday afternoon when I went and preached to my dad about hell and salvation, I never realized I would be preaching on the streets. I will be doing videos that are going out all over the world. These, Some of these videos and these audio files are going into nations where the Bible is not allowed. Now, if you would have told me that in 1987, when I got saved, I would never have believed it. The grace and the wonderfulness of God to go for. Now, listen, I've fallen down many times. I've slipped in and gone down many times. But my God is able to deliver me, pick me up, wash me in the blood of Jesus Christ, and move on. That's how wonderful God is. As far as I know, I mean, the immediates of my family, I've witnessed to them all, got many of them angry and left me. And yet right now, they've died. Many are in hell, I'm sorry to say. Few are right now in heaven. I could give you names right now of people in my family I know that are in heaven. And there's a few that are still living are going to heaven. And there are many that I know that are not going to heaven right now. I'm praying for their souls. And yet, when I die and face the judgment seat of Christ, there will be people there at the judgment seat of Christ, not the great white throne judgment, because God has used me to his honor and glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the man that witnessed to me, led me to Jesus Christ. I won't mention his name now. He never took me under under his hand. No one ever trained me. When I was in the church and God said, listen, I, I'm going to use you. I want you. I went up to the pastor of that church. I said, hey, God's calling me. God wants me. God's going to use me. And that church and that pastor turned their back on me. And they lifted up somebody else whose life right now I know is distraught and dead. And, but I'm still going. I'm still serving. I'm still praising God. And that's what Paul sees in Onassis. That's what Paul sees in anybody that he has opportunity to father in the Christian faith to grow. I'm trying to think of a name right now. I can't think of his name. Um, oh, man, I am so sorry. My brain does not remember things. Oh, let me look it up real here. Demas. I guarantee it broke Paul's heart when Demas left. All the work. Demas is mentioned in the scriptures as a man that served God and he left. Whatever the story was, I was that runaway slave once. I had no idea that I was running. That a small church in Pawkatuck, Connecticut. And that's not even the church I, I, I grew up in anymore. It's another denomination. Which showed me how to be free. They would not teach me to grow. But they did show me a Savior who died for my sins. Upon receiving Jesus Christ as my Savior, I returned to God as a new man. And to my family, I became a weird man. 
I became strange, but to God I'm a new creature. And there are people in my family that said, what happened to him? And there are people in my family that told my grandparents, you keep that boy away from me. He come to me about that Catholic bashing again. You keep him away from me. People upset because I preach the gospel. I preach Jesus Christ. They don't want to hear it. No longer a slave, but a servant. There's a difference. The wages of sin is death. In my sins, under the fatherhood of Satan, John 8, 44, I was going to die and go to hell. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, I was set free. Sin cut away. I had that spiritual circumcision with the word of God that, slipper, that separated my soul from my flesh. That operation. That this flesh may sin. If the Lord tarries, it will go in the grave and rot. But it will be raised incorruptible. A new body God will give me. Judge at the judgment seat of Christ for sins that are not under the blood. For things I've done for myself, selfishly. But for that which I've done for God and Jesus Christ alone, gold, silver, and precious stones. I didn't have to. If I don't preach the word of God, if I don't do a public ministry, if I don't pray for others, God's not going to send a tornado to destroy my house. And leave the rest of the houses on the block up. It's something I want to do. It is something that when I preach on the street at the, tonight now at the farmer's market. I look at those people and I'm sad because I know where they're going. Unless they have done what I've done and believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. I know where they're going. I know their fate. I know their eternal damnation without Jesus Christ. I don't know how long, like I said, the, 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 I got saved on a Saturday, Sunday morning, went to church and proclaimed before all. I'm saved. The week after that, I was baptized. Not for salvation, but tell, hey, listen. I'm a new creature. But that's Saturday. I was saved went to church Sunday morning. Sunday afternoon, one day after my salvation, I went to my dad and told him. Didn't know nothing. Never even read the Bible or anything like that. I told him about hell. And I don't know how long after that, I wrote him a letter. Like Paul did to Philemon. I says, Dad, I have done you wrong. Some cases I'm not going to mention. But dad, I have stolen money for you. And I don't know how much I've stolen from you. But I know one thing. When I stole money from you, it was in, in quantities of 20s. I'll tell you right now, dad, I have received Jesus Christ as my savior. I am saved. And if you name a price right now, how much I owe you. I'll pay you back some way, somehow, in writing, and sign my name to it. My dad told me I didn't have to. He had forgiven me. I wish my dad would be forgiven by Jesus Christ. But that same story fits in the life of the book of Philemon. Here is a man that had done you wrong, and they say that he stole from Philemon. I don't know what it is. You know why we don't know what fine, what Onassis did to Philemon? Are you ready? Let, let, let me I turn to the scripture. Why we do not know Onassis wrong to Philemon? I'll show you. First John. First John. Watch how you buy Bible labels. Ah, oh, just ruined my Bible. First John one nine. 
If we confess our sins, and we know Onassimus confessed his sins after what he had done to Philemon. Did he not? Did he not run away from Philemon and came across to Paul and got saved and now his sins are under the blood? He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Why would the Holy Spirit mention the sins of Philemon? I mean, of Onassimus. I get those two names messed up. Why would the Holy Spirit mention the sins of Onassimus when we read in the Bible it says that God forgives and forgets? How's that? From the day that I was born to April 21st, 1987, all those sins are under the blood. Now, all the sins since that day I put under the blood of Jesus Christ that I have done, they're under the blood. They are lost. They are forgotten. Now, there are some sins I have not confessed. There are some sins I don't know that I have done. There are sins that are still there. And I will answer to them at the judgment seat of Christ. Would they or stubble? But the sins that we put under the blood of Jesus Christ, they're gone. They're forgotten. And the book of Philemon, what, what is it? 25 verses teaches us of the wonderfulness of God of being saved. What sins are you talking about, Onassimus? I don't know. They're under the blood. Philemon, when he comes to you and tells you what happened, that he's saved, and this letter from Paul comes to you, and whatever he's done wrong to you, what did Jesus tell Peter? Forgive him, 400, 900. Don't even count. Finally, we'll read this epistle. He'll read this letter. He'll look at the man carrying it, maybe trembling. I don't know. And I believe what happened with finally this announcements. You and I are brothers now. You and I have the same father, God. And I understand that Paul has need for you. Get your matters, get any other matters you have settled here, and get going. And maybe, maybe Philemon even wrote Paul a letter. We don't know. Maybe Philemon sent some, because there are people here that Paul greeted. Maybe he sent someone else with him. I was a runaway slave one time. I was run away from God. And I ran right to Calvary by the Holy Spirit. And I knelt down at that cross and I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. I went in that empty tomb. I saw no body. I saw no man. The religion that came out, I had him on a cross still on Easter. And I came out of that empty tomb a Christian. Because my Savior is alive. My Savior is risen. My Savior is the Lord Jesus Christ who is God. Seated at the right hand of God. Who washed away my sins. I'm just praising the Lord all the way.